as networks become more complex and distributed, understanding why things break and how to fix them has become a critical challenge. But network expertise is in short supply, especially among DevOps and SRE teams who are tasked with maintaining uptime. That's where Kentech's new cause analysis comes in. Powered by AI, it is designed to automatically pinpoint the root cause of network issues, so teams can resolve incidents faster without needing a CCNA. Joining me today is Chris O'Brien, Senior Director of Product Management at Kentic, to talk about how this innovation is helping every engineer become a network expert. Chris, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks very much. Of course, we have seen DevOps and SRE roles become mainstream in recent years, but network engineers are still relatively rare. Why do you think that is and what's driving that shift? Yeah, I mean, well, network engineering was hot for a, a long time. Um, I think networks still are super important, but they're foundational, they're working, uh, and um, a lot of the industry is focused uh, more on the forefront of where people are moving around, which is things like SRE and DevOps and application development in the cloud and so forth. Um, the fact remains, though, that the network is underlying all of those things, and we need that network to work well. Uh, we need it to work at, at scale. We need it to be performed. Performant. And so it produces this situation where uh, networking teams are, uh, you know, staying the small, staying the same size or getting smaller, but having a growing number of responsibilities, growing scale of infrastructure that they're responsible for. And I think it's really just the, you know, the pr proliferation of all of these sort of cloud architectures, microservices architectures that are driving a lot of that focus on um, the app and SRE and DevOps side. Kentic's new cause analysis feature promises to identify and explain network issues automatically. Can you walk us through how it works and what role AI plays in that process? Yeah, so if you think about running a network well, one of the most common um, problems is when you've overloaded your capacity. So that'll cause packet loss, that'll cause um, slow performance, and how that is experienced for users is poor application performance and delays or unresponsiveness from an application. Um, so we're looking into what we're trying to figure out is what a network engineer has to figure out is what is all of the traffic that is consuming that capacity, that limited capacity that we have. And uh, we just released a new capability called cause analysis um, that helps you understand what is the main contributors to an increase, a decrease or a spike in traffic. And what uh, we have discovered in talking to a lot of our customers is they'll get requests as network engineers um, from uh, the DevOps team, the SRE team, maybe a senior support team. And those teams will be asking them if there's a networking problem and if there's capacity that's high, what's causing that? And historically, how that has worked is you need an expert who understands the network and who understands traffic. And what they do is they take a look at the overall traffic. They see the increase in capacity usage. Then they zoom into that and start filtering to try and understand what is really driving, what type of traffic that is. And that typically takes a lot of iteration takes a lot of time, five, 10 minutes in each of these cases, and they're doing this a lot per day, um, and it takes expertise. And so all of that require, causes the delay in both the fix, but even SRE and DevOps teams understanding what's going on and if it's something that they can resolve or not. So what cause analysis does, it identifies those change points and increase in capacity. It tells you what is causing those, what the primary contributors are to that traffic change. And it explains it in both the sort of human language, natural language, um, as if an expert, a network engineer did that work, as well as in the technical specifics of the port and protocol and autonomous systems and all of those sorts of things. And can you also just emphasize a bit on the role of AI is playing? You did touch upon that, but I just, because everybody talks about AI these days. So if you can specify that. Yeah, AI is um, pretty important in a lot of the technology we're building right now. So um, deciding how to do the queries to understand how to divide up that traffic and where to look and then understand to what degree that 
what sort of percentage that is causing the impact, the increase or decrease, that sort of decision-making process and repeated querying of data is something that the AI leads. And then once a conclusion has come to the AI, um, rather than just delivering the sort of technical fields, TCP ports and so on, it gives you a natural language explanation of, of course, it comes from large language models. So, you know, two, three uh, sentences describing what's going on. With AI doing most of the heavy lifting, does that mean that teams can operate with less hands-on networking expertise? Or do you see it more as an assistant to herd the experts, which means that you still need networking expertise? Yeah, I mean, uh, when we talk to our customers, it's very clear that the challenge is an increase in demand from all parts of the business to do more and more on the network. So more network capabilities and greater scale, but with the same or smaller teams. So something has to make up that gap there for more work, but the same number of people. And so that's where I see AI uh, being able to help out. There's certainly like AI is not running your network. We certainly require these human experts. They know how to run a network. Um, but augmenting with uh, increasingly powerful and intelligent capabilities from your systems and tools that you use, I think is really the only way to get there. What type of companies are using Kentic today and what are the biggest network related challenges that turn to you for help with? Yeah, so we started something like a decade ago. Traffic analysis is where we really um, started and, and um, became a world leader in. Um, and so we work with a lot of the largest companies in the world. Um, that's really uh, who we work with the most. Uh, Dropbox, uh, ServiceNow, um, Zoom, uh, and many carriers that, um, that we work with uh, fit into that category. Yeah. Network data is often siloed and it's hard to interpret. How does cause analysis integrate into existing observability stack or workflows? Yeah, so there's a number of things we do there. First, um, our data is all uh, exportable via a capability we call Firehose, so we can export that at scale. Um, you can also query the data via API, but recently we've introduced a capability where you can query via natural language. So then these agents can start to work with each other to to come to some conclusion without ha having a sort of fancy formatted protocol that is defined and built and tested. You know, they can interact with natural language. I think that's going to be an accelerator. We recently also announced a partnership with uh, ServiceNow. So folks that are in the help desk and other groups that use ServiceNow looking at a ticket that they're trying to resolve, they can call on ServiceNow's uh, agent to help. And that agent can communicate with a variety of um, different agents from other vendors who have expertise in different areas and we're providing the network as observability piece of that. Um, so there's a number of avenues and we're thinking about some of this sort of MCP and A2A uh, methods for the future, but um, there's quite a bit of that we support today. Latency, packet loss, rotting loops, these can be hard to diagnose under pressure. What's the learning curve like for teams starting with Kentix cause analysis? Yeah, I mean, cause analysis, there's a whole lot you can learn about Kentic, but cause analysis um, shows up in the product in a couple of different ways. But the most simple way it shows up is anytime you're looking at a chart in our data explorer, the main way you look at charts, there's a button that says analysis, analyze with a cause analysis option there. So you're clicking one button. And in that chart, you'll see it finds and highlights the periods of increase or decrease. And then it will enumerate them in a list and uh, give you a natural language explanation as to what is contributing to that. So it's a really easy sort of on ramp. Um, you know, a lot of the reason folks uh, use our tools is that they can really dig deep and ask any question of the network. Um, but in this case, we're really trying to accelerate that by providing a one click workflow. As AI gets more involved in infrastructure operations, how do you ensure that the insights its surfaces are explainable and trustworthy? Yeah, so I think there's two pieces of that. First is we have to recognize AI is not running anyone's network right now. Um, and if you start thinking that way, I'm telling you, it's just too early. You'll cause all sorts of problems. So that's certainly not how 
how we think about it. We think about augmenting the user uh, and focusing on what is the best way for those two to interact, to get most out of the machine and most out of the human being behind the console. A lot of times the machine is doing a lot of the legwork uh, and the human is doing a lot of the reasoning. So an example of that is with cause analysis, we give you those explanations, but that's after a multitude of different queries and assessments of the results of the queries. And then we just highlight what we think is the right answer. If you want to drill into that, you can't. You can look at the exact query that was run, see the results of that query. You can adjust the tweak the query here and there and really ensure that 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 your interpretation as a human matches the computer, but without having to do the 10 or 20 queries to get there in the first place. I think that's super important. Chris, thank you for joining me and walking us through how AI is helping teams close the network visibility gap. It is exciting to see tools like cause analysis empowering engineers across discipline, not just networking pros. And for those watching, stay tuned for more conversations on how AI and observability are shaping the future of infrastructure and reliability. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Thank you.